Hello everybody and welcome to my new SQL Server Quickie. In today's Quickie I want to talk about a very prominent topic in SQL Server, database shrinks. With a shrink you are able to gain back unused space in your data files. This might seem to be a very viable solution, but to be honest, a database shrink is never ever recommended in SQL Server because it leads to very high fragmentation in all of your indexes. Let's switch now over to the flip chart where I want to show you why performing database shrink operations isn't really a good idea. In this flip chart demo, I want to show you now why a database shrink operation introduces index fragmentation. As you can see, I have here a data file and I have illustrated two indexes, two clustered indexes. Imagine we have here one table, one clustered table that we want to drop, and afterwards we are running a database shrink operation because we want to gain back that space from our data file. As you can see here, I have another index, class of non clustered index, doesn't matter. We have here a nice leaf level with some pages 80, 81, 82, 83. What SQL Server is doing during a database shrink operation is very simple. SQL Server takes the last page of the leaf level, in our case 83, and moves that page 83 to the first place in the data file where we have some space available. So we are getting here a page of 83, then SQL Server takes again the last page of that index, in our case 82, moves 82 forward, afterwards 81, and finally page ID 80. And based on those pages, on, those, on that leaf level, we are again creating a nice B2 structure. As you can see, we have introduced nearly 100% index fragmentation because all those pages are just out of order. Means when you are scanning that index in the leaf level, you are introducing random IO. You are scanning for page ID 80, 81, 82, 83. So not really a very clever implementation that Microsoft has chosen for implementing data push shrink operations. So it's very, very important when you have performed the shrink operation, you also have to think about the introduced index fragmentation in all of your cluster and non-clustered indexes. Let's switch now over to SQL Server Management Studio and I will show you this concrete example. In this simple demo, I want to show you the negative side effects of database shrink operations in SQL Server and why they are never ever recommended. In the first step, I create a table where we will store some chunk data of 10 megabytes that I will insert in the next step. After we have populated our chunk table, I create another table with a unique clustered index defined on it. And I also create an additional non-clustered index on that table. I just want to show you with that simple table that the database shrink operation introduces index fragmentation in clustered and non-clustered indexes. The next step, I insert 10 megabytes of data into that table. We can now check the current index fragmentation of both indexes with the dynamic management function sysdmdb index physical stats. The index fragmentation in the clustered index is less than 1% and our non-clustered index has an index fragmentation of less than 10%. Not that bad. When we look into the file system, you can also see that the data file of the database has a size of around 23 megabytes. In the next step, I then drop the table that contains 10 megabytes of chunk data. When we look back at the file system, the space occupied by that table is not reclaimed back by SQL Server. The data file has still a size of around 23 megabytes. I then perform a database shrink operation to shrink the data file down and gain some additional space in the file system. When we look back again at the file system, you can see now that the data file is only 13 megabytes in size. We gained back the 10 megabytes from the chunk table that we deleted previously. It seems that everything has worked fine. 
So let's check the index fragmentation of the clustered and non-clustered index again. Our clustered index has now an index fragmentation of more than 90% and our non-clustered index has also an index fragmentation of nearly 90%. The database shrink operation has just rearranged almost every page in the leaf level of the index out of order. The logical and physical sorting order is not the same anymore. What do you do to get rid of that index fragmentation? You rebuild your indexes if the fragmentation is larger than 30%. Therefore, we now perform a rebuild of both indexes. But guess what? The index fragmentation is of course gone, but when we look back at the file system, you can also see that the data file of the database has now a larger size than previously. The size of the data file is now around 25 megabytes. It's even larger than initially when we performed the database shrink. The index rebuild operation just needs additional space in the data form. As a result, we haven't gained anything by performing a database shrink and afterwards rebuilding our indexes. Therefore, my recommendation to you, never ever shrink your databases nor activate the auto shrink operation on the database level. In this sequence of a quick here, you have seen why database shrink operation is a very bad idea in SQL Server. Database shrink operations in SQL Server are not really carefully designed by Microsoft. The most important takeaway from this SQL Server quickie is knowing that you have to deal with your index fragmentation after you have performed a database shrink operation. Running database shrinks regularly is of course not really recommended, for example in a database maintenance plan. On the other hand, it could make sense to run a database shrink operation after you have deleted a huge amount of data to get the space in the file system back. But again, you have to deal with the index fragmentation that is introduced afterwards. I hope that you have enjoyed the SQL Server Quickie and I already look forward to talking to you again next month. Thanks for watching and stay tuned.